of information that the microbes had uh, transmitted to John Dee. And what he also realized from his interactions with these supernatural beings was that in order to even move along with this process, it was going to take hundreds of years. And in fact, from what he was receiving from them, he realized that they would have to subjugate the whole planet in order to not only continue to move the technology forward, but in order to get the element silicon and be able to process it, the whole of the planet would have to be subjugated. And therefore, it is from that time, it is from the time of the 15th and 16th and 17th century that we have all the idioms we associate with England. We have the rising of the great navies. We have the rising of empire. We have the rising of the first stock exchanges. And we have the rising of the colonial impulse. A tiny little nothing country, England, where 100 or 200 years before, the kings were shivering in windowless castles, literally shivering, couldn't even get the taxes together to fight their neighbors. And suddenly, we have empires beginning, empires starting, the great proliferation of what we now know to be the British Empire. And of course, in the vanguard of this were the beings that we know as the pirates or the pirates, because the word pirates actually means the men of fire. These were direct agents of the Tudor dynasty. The heads of the pirates were the top officials of the pirates. The leaders of most of the pirates were the top brass of the Tudor dynasty, trained in the finest universities, even the fine maritime universities. And one of the greatest leaders of them all was Sir Francis Drake. And of course, the word Drake actually means the dragon. San Francisco Bay was originally called Drake's Bay. The pirates, or the pirates, the men of fire, serving the Tudor dynasty, were headed by men like Sir Francis Drake and Edmund Spencer. He was the great-grandfather or the ancestor of Lady Diana Spencer. The progeny of the pirates settled on the lands that they conquered and opened the great universities for the education of their sons and daughters. They employed the fraternity structure to ensure that only the chosen would be exposed to the real occult history of the world and to their role as the future leaders and thinkers, overworld and underworld figures, educated and funded to adroitly lead the rest of mankind down whatever roads became necessary. In the tarot cards, for instance, the devil card is number 15. And we have the old uh, pirate motto, 15 men on a dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho, -ho, and a bottle of rum. But the occult history of the pirates has really never been told. And of course, the famous symbol of the pirates was the skull and crossbones, a symbol known to be used before them by the Knights of Malta and the Knights Templars or other occult fraternities. And the job of the pirates was to bring mayhem and disease and slaughter to all the lands that they colonized. These were agents of the British crown and not as the Errol Flynn movies of the swashbuckling buccaneers tries to show you some romantic heroes. These people were cutthroats and they were, had an agenda to be sent out to all the corners of the world and to massacre, massacre whoever they found there.